Hello, my name is Chris Kiak, and in this video today, I'm going to showcase how to export a three plate built up assembly here in Tecla Structures that's fully welded and bring that across into AGT Beam Master's uh, robotic welding processing software called Cortex. And so we'll showcase how you can get uh, all of your welds accurately in Tecla Structures, and then we'll show you some of the different things that you need to keep an eye out for to make sure that you have an accurate and quality import into Cortex software. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in to the left end of the assembly. If I actually click on this first web, uh, I will go ahead and inquire on the assembly. And you'll see that on the overall assembly that the orange part is the main part of the assembly. So that's basically driving the coordinate system of the assembly and essentially how the shop drawing and everything is going to be made. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just zoom back in here and let's start taking a look at uh, some of the welds and things that I've got on here. First of all, um, one thing that's really important to understand about uh, metal building rafters and columns that are three plate built up assemblies like this is a lot of times uh, metal building companies already have pull through welders um, that will robotically kind of weld the uh, flanges and the webs together. And that's basically what I'm seeing here with this continuous weld near side uh, for basically the webs to the flange. Now, what you'll see here at the very end, though, is that I mo manually modeled in uh, these six inch long welds using polygon welds. And I did that on both the uh, top and the bottom. So if I rotate around here, you'll see that. Now, the reason is, is because in the actual in the shop, what will happen is that they will actually sometimes hold off uh, the start point of this uh, weld on the track welder. And basically, they'll start about six inches in and then they will usually finish this off by hand. However, they want to do this now with the AGT robot. So basically I've modeled in two separate welds. Now MBS won't automatically um, set these welds back and kind of split these welds up. So I had to do this manually right now, but I just wanted to showcase this condition. Now, because of the fact that some of these welds on this assembly are already gonna be done either by hand or by a track welder, that's uh, basically, or a pull through welder that's coming uh, to weld the flanges and the webs together, I actually need to kind of tell the beam master not to do certain welds that are on this assembly. The easiest way to do that is I can actually select on a weld and then if we right click on it and go to properties here, it'll open up the properties pane on the right. And then at the bottom, I can go to user defined attributes. And there are two ways that you can tell uh, Cortex software by AGT how to ignore a weld that's coming across from the model. The first way is either in user field one, you can put a lower C or the second way is in weld user field five, you can put a capital C here. And I'm actually gonna show you at the end of the video how MBS can actually automatically tag those welds when it imports into Tecla from slide rule. So basically what I've done is I've tagged um, all of these welds here that are continuous along the web and the flange. Since those are gonna already be done by the pull through welder, I'm tagging them with the C so that way, uh, you know, Cortex doesn't see those welds as something that it needs to do itself on the robotic welder. However, everything else will need to be done. So these welds here, when I go to user defined attributes, they don't have a C on it because I want that six inch weld there to be done by the machine. Now, then you'll also kind of notice here that um, if you do, sometimes when you import from MBS, you won't see this corner clip here and detailers may not put that in. And so the weld may need to actually terminate like halfway, but usually slide rule will put a whole weld all the way across there. So the point of what I'm showing you here is, and, and if I even go on the bottom to the web, you'll see that there are welds that are actually going through the web here and um, converging kind of on a point. Now I have noticed that Cortex will split those welds up when it's got an interference and it can't go through there all the way. Um, so it'll make two separate fillet welds on either side of the web. And in some cases it pulls back a little bit here for some of the welds. Now, I'm um, just kind of going through this. I did create a few different testing scenarios. So this is a quarter inch fillet weld here and it's only on one side. And um, I am using polygon welds everywhere. The AGT export software, um, if it sees uh, Tecla's normal simple welds, which is basically just the, the simple weld command where you pick two parts and then the weld gets applied versus using polygon welds. If you're using simple welds or you have slide rules set uh, from MBS to import into Tecla using simple or normal welds, um, what the AGT export will do is it's actually gonna select all those welds and convert them to polygon welds. Um, and it needs those polygon welds because then it has that start and end point geometry, which tells the robotics uh, you know, software exactly where that physical weld is in space on the assembly. So that's just something to notice. Now I want you to see here that I have a quarter inch weld size 
and then I have it only on the bottom flange there. Then up here I have you know a polygon weld that has actually already been converted from a simple weld and um, I had specified a near side far side value in the weld symbol itself. And then um, you know I've got all my just kind of basic welds for the stiffener here. And then here on the clips, this is pretty common as well. You're gonna see that uh, most metal building manufacturers will do this sort of half the clip weld on either side and kind of stagger it. And that reduces the amount of weld that they need to do here. So you'll see that pretty often. And there's a way to set that up in MBS so that way that automatically comes across in the Tecla through slide rule. And then uh, I've got my butt weld here. And this weld uh, should not be able to be done by AGT. Um, so it should get actually ignored. And we'll see that here in a second. And then when I come over here to the right hand side of the assembly, um, I've done a few different things in here as well. So if I select on this, I have intentionally made a quarter inch uh, weld on one side and then there's three sixteenths on another. So we're gonna see exactly what happens with that. And then um, here I've just got a standard web weld near side, far side. Then up at the top, I have also done something very specific. Uh, here, I have actually put in a proper, you know, complete joint penetration or complete penetration groove weld. Now MBS will actually not import the weld completely like this. Um, what it, and I, I have actually not turned the prep on. You'll see the weld actually inside of the material, but I have not turned the prep on on purpose because I want to show you what happens over in AGT. Um, if you do prep the secondary part, then AGT will ignore this weld because there's that gap there and it can't put that weld um, on that surface. But I just want you to be aware that uh, MBS does not put that preparation in when it imports through slide rule into Tecla. And then also, um, you know, if you don't set it there um, and you don't set a size and some of these values, then the, you know, AGT's export is not going to ignore this weld and it'll actually put a fillet weld there. So I'm going to show you what you have to kind of watch out for. Okay, the other thing about uh, MBS's import right now is that I think it was importing it in as a flare, like a flare V groove weld, which uh, it shouldn't be. It, it should actually be coming across as a bevel groove, kind of like this. And uh, MBS isn't putting in the 45 degree, the root opening, or, or even the weld size here for the prep at all. So this is something that I've just manually done um, after it's imported in from MBS into slide rule, or from slide rule, sorry, into Tecla structures. Okay, so. That shows you a few, di few different conditions. Now, one last condition I will explain is that sometimes on the far side, so we're now looking at the far side web, so the back side of the assembly, and there are some cases where I've heard some manufacturers will actually put a stitch weld just on the back, um, so that way it's there for stability and to prevent warping or some, I, I don't know if it's maybe some extra capacity. But the, uh, the other thing I've heard is also sometimes doing a partial weld from the end plates or the base plates on the far side returning like, you know, six to 12 inches out um, just for, again, just extra quality uh, there. MBS is not going to automatically be able to do that currently uh, when it imports through slide rule into Tecla structures. So you would have to manually add those welds. So here where I've got this stitch weld, I have basically um, imported these or manually modeled these stitch welds here. And you will notice that the direction in which you model the stitch welds is kind of important to where it actually will draw the first stitch. So if you look at my properties, I've got a three on 12 here or three on 24, sorry. So three on two foot. I've set this to a chain intermittent, okay? And then I've set the fillet weld size only on the near side of the weld. Now at the top, you'll see that I actually, uh, the yellow point here is at the inside near the end plate. And then I went from left to right. Now when I did that, you're gonna actually see here that the uh, what Tecla does on continuous intermittent welds is it always puts the first stitch right there um, at the beginning of the weld then it'll start using that pitch to equally space these across. Now, if it gets to the end distance and it can't get another equal spaced weld there, then it will leave that weld out or it'll do a partial weld at the end based on whatever it can fit to that second point that you pick for the weld. Now, same thing here. When I look at this one, notice I picked this point and it started there. I go across and then my last weld over here, it's kind of a little bit short of that second magenta picking point. Now on the bottom flange, I reverse that out a little bit. So let me just kind of look at that. You'll see that I actually started from the right here and then went to the left. And then on this one, I went from the right to the left as well. So this one's a little bit short. Now I want you to you know, maybe pause and remember this because what ha actually happens it comes across into AGT is gonna look a little bit different than what we see here. Last thing I'll show you is over here on uh, this flange brace clip at the inside flange. 
we can see that this is sometimes what I've heard uh, manufacturers will do. They'll do the horizontal weld on one side of the tab, and then they'll do a vertical weld on the other side like this. And so we're going to take a look and make sure that uh, that weld configuration came across into Cortex software uh, perfectly as well. Okay, so now let's showcase how do you actually export this from Tecla Structures over across to the AGT Cortex software. Well, my suggestion is that typically you're going to go up to the Drawings and Reports tab, you're going to find your drawing in your drawing list, you'll select those drawings, and then you'll select the objects in the model. Now, if you're just manually selecting something in the model to export, then I would recommend coming down here, just select Assembly, and then you can select on that uh, entire assembly or the multiple assemblies that you want to export. Then what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that numbering is up to date, all your drawings are up to date in Tecla, and then you'll go over here to the Applications Components panel, and you can do a search for AGT, or what we can do is we can actually come in here and there should be an AGT group that's actually created during the installation here. So there's this AGT robotics uh, group in the applications and components panel. You can then double click on this. That will open up the tool. And now I usually never change anything over here on these settings, especially in the metal building side because we don't really ever have any shot bolted um, accessories. So we don't really need to kind of uh, usually change any of these. Now, the one thing that you may want to change is the name of the file um, and what the export name is. It usually takes on the uh, basically the model name here to default to and whether you want to export everything or selected. Again, I would typically choose selected because this is going to be based on the assemblies that you're um, actually releasing for, based on the drawings that you're releasing out to the shop. So I'm going to use selected here. Now, one thing to understand, the dialog box is a little bit different than, um, than say, like other normal Tecla dialog boxes. The actual OK button is what does the export process rather than just close the dialog box like in other Tecla windows. So that's something to watch out for. The other thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do this before. It will warn me about this, but I'm going to save the model. So I've got my numbering done. I'm going to save the model. And it actually is going to pop up a warning message and tell you why to do that. So I'll press OK. It says, hey, you know, you are getting ready to do the export and what uh, this exporter tool will do is it'll uh, find all the welds on the selected assemblies in the model and it's going to convert them to polygon welds if they're not already polygon welds. Well, when that happens, then sometimes Tecla is going to consider that as a modification flag and then your numbering is going to get question marks all over it on your parts. Now, typically it doesn't cause any modifications or piece mark changes, and usually you can run numbering modified and, and you'd be okay and all your piece marks stay the same. But just as a fail safe, I've saved my model beforehand. I'm going to let it convert uh, the extra polygon welds if it needs to, and then I can actually reopen the model um, without saving again, and I will just be back to exactly where I was. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes. It selects everything, gets the welds. And then uh, there might be a few errors. Usually when I see errors and stuff like this and the error log, um, it's going to be about like kind of the attributes that are being written, uh, the weld user defined attributes, but they shouldn't be any sort of issue. So I'm just going to go and say, okay. And now just to follow the process. So, you know, most users, you might accidentally press, okay. You can come up here and close this or just press cancel. That'll close the dialog box. And to follow the process, I'm just going to reopen that model here. And then I will just say no to saving. So I don't want to save. I'll say no, it'll reopen the model and I'm back to exactly where I was um, in the model before I ran the AGT export. All right, so now we're over here in the Cortex software, which is provided by AGT. Now, the first thing that you need to do is you'll actually take a look at um, what is going to be the import mode or the configuration that you're going to be uh, doing all of your processing and your simulations with. Well, first here, you're going to see that usually when AGT uh, does the training and setup of your Cortex software, they'll create these different modes and saved modes for you. Now, CAD basically means that I'm 100% going to be using the welds that are defined in Tecla and only using those welds when I import and process the assembly here in Cortex. So let me explain this a little bit. If I actually scroll down here, I can choose the edit option. And here's where you select and you'll see this visual picture. So there's CAD only and then there's auto generate, which means that AGT is going to actually do everything by itself. It'll look at all the contact surfaces of the parts on the assembly. And then you see here in Magenta that it's calculating the uh, where the welds will go and it's also calculating the weld sizes. So it's not reading the weld locations or sizes from the model in any way. Now, some manufacturers use this. 
Um, but uh, the way that AGT is doing it is it's not an engineering or calculation or design thing. It's basically looking up in an Excel spreadsheet table that says, uh, that looks at like minimum thicknesses and maximum thicknesses and assigns uh, fillet weld sizes to that. And then it looks at the geometry to figure out which surfaces can be welded. So again, it's, it's very detail centric. This is not engineering. Now, if you're using MBS where it is doing the engineering and the design and placing welds or you're placing welds uh, very specifically in the model, you don't want to use this auto generate. You want to use the CAD only. Now, hybrid is a combination of both uh, coming from CAD and the auto generation. Um, I, I will tell you that in reality, if you're doing uh, you know, accurate locations of welds and things in Tecla already, you're most likely going to be using the CAD only and not the hybrid in any way. So here I'm going to show and demonstrate today the CAD only, and uh, I'll go ahead and use the all feature here. And so I'll just say accept, and then I'll say, um, I'm just actually say cancel because that was already saved away that way. But the important thing here is that you need to make sure that you've selected the right mode that you want to import into. And again, we've done all that work of getting everything right in Tecla uh, before importing, so I'm gonna choose the CAD option, which will read 100% the welds from Tecla. Now I'm gonna go ahead and say import CAD up here at the upper left-hand corner. And then I'm gonna go ahead and browse and find my AGTX file that I just exported from Tecla. So I'll select that and press open. And then that'll import in. And then here you'll see the list of assemblies. Now there's only one assembly that I had selected. So that's what I'm seeing up here at the top. I've got that assembly and you'll see the piece mark and then you'll see all of the pieces that are underneath it. Now what I need to do is I'm gonna select this here by checking on the checkbox. I'll go to step two. So what's nice is at the top, there's a step one, step two, step three, and step four. I'm gonna go ahead and select this and I'm gonna say process selected. So when I do that, um, and in fact, warns me I need to make a group. So I'll just, usually you can put in the job number here, but I'm just gonna say test to have a group here. And then I'll say process selected. It'll go through, read that assembly, read all the parts, and it'll verify that um, basically all of the objects that have welds and that the welds you know, can basically essentially be done here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go to step three and add this to the queue. And so that adds it down here into assemblies and queue at the lower right hand corner. I can select on that item in the list and say inspect here at the bottom middle. So there's this inspect button. This will then launch the 3D viewer. So once this launches up, we'll go ahead and start taking a look at the assembly itself and we'll see all of the different welding conditions and what came across. All right, so when you first come in here, essentially what you're seeing and um, the way that you kind of navigate is you, uh, if you hold down the middle mouse button, that's a rotate. If you hold down uh, control and middle mouse button, that's pan. And then, um, you know, basically you can zoom in and out using your scroll wheel. Now, what you'll see at, uh, at the very first is that on the left end of the assembly, we see this origin point. And one thing I want you to understand is that you are looking at the front web but it's actually upside down. So what I find that I have to do here is I have to rotate myself around and I actually, and you can use this as well, and then just kind of rotate yourself around or just middle mouse button. And the reason why I'm doing this is because uh, it was actually upside down. And so like I know this is true because see how the uh, stiffener here on the end plate is at the top. If I actually go back into the model, the stiffener is at the top of the assembly there. So I did notice that I do have to rotate that around so sorry, let's go back to AGT. And now from here, what we can do is we can actually start selecting on some items. And so the way that you will select on weld objects, which is basically these cones that you're seeing here. And the reason why they're cones is because it's actually showing the direction that the weld and the robotic welder is going to go ahead and do the weld. And if I hold down control on my keyboard and then select on a weld, it'll show me the properties related to that. And there are different colors uh, for the welds and shows different statuses. If you see an orange weld, then essentially that's showcasing here. If you read at this uh, filter reason at the bottom, the wall thickness is too large or you know too small. And so basically the web is probably too small for this uh, 3 16 weld size based on the weld tables that uh, Cortex software has in, inside of it to make sure that you don't do a weld that shouldn't be done on the on the steel and that might cause actually damage to the steel. So those are some things that the AGT guys go through with you when they set up your software. And if you see a green weld, then we know that we're good to go. There's a weld recipe for this for the robotic welder. Uh, the orientation of the parts is good and the joint here can be done by the robotic welder. And if I select on that, we'll see that uh, we have the actual weld size here and that everything is good to go. 
Now, one thing that you'll notice right away is that I've got my, uh, t I think I did 12 inch long or 16 or 12 inch long welds here, which are my entry welds that'll be done by the, uh, the robot. And notice that the long continuous welds for the near side of the web, they are not here because I filtered those out with the C. So again, Cortex knows by seeing that C in the user defined attribute that it should ignore those welds because those welds were already done with the pull through welder. Now you also see here that when I hold down control that um, we saw the example in the model where it was a continuous weld going through the web, but uh, Cortex knew that there was gonna be an interference there and it actually stopped that weld uh, short. Now if I go up to the top, it also saw that there was a stiffener part here that the robot couldn't get through and it couldn't do that continuous weld. And so it split this weld up here at the top as well. Now at the bottom, if I hold down control, you can see that this is the quarter inch weld and it only did it on that far side only. And so again, because it was a polygon weld and it had the specific points at the bottom and my weld size was only on that near side, it essentially only drew that there. Okay, so that pretty much covers the end plate welds. Let's go ahead and go up to the clip and you can see that there is the offset staggered weld there. So, you know, half the plate on that side and then half the plate on that side. And then what you see with these circles, these are essentially um, the rotators or the rollers like that rotate the assembly out um, when it's uh, actually in the AGT machine. This is actually kind of handy to see because you'll see that sometimes uh, cer certain clips or parts that are really close to the rotators, they essentially, uh, it will prevent like the arm from getting in there and being able to do certain parts welds. And so that's why you might see some orange um, kind of like failures there or, or can't do that weld uh, just due to that. All right, so now moving across, uh, the butt weld basically for uh, the web to web should, won't be done by uh, the machine. And so I shouldn't see that actually in here anywhere, which I do not, and that's been filtered out. And so then I go over to the other side, the other end plate here. And I just wanted to showcase that there's that um, lead in weld there. We have our weld uh, here on the bottom. Now, one thing that I wanna showcase is that I know on one of these welds, um, I actually oversized one side of the weld and then I had like I had a quarter and then I had three sixteenths. Now, this is something I've noticed that even though in Tecla, I have changed that weld size. So watch this, we'll just go back over to Tecla. We'll go to that condition, which I believe was right here. So I had a quarter inch on one side and then I had a three sixteenths on the other because I was just beefing up the weld due to that gap there for that heavy skewed plate. And so when I actually go back over into uh, Cortex, you'll see here that I've noticed that Cortex will basically use the largest size of the two in that welds uh, symbol and it makes both welds that. So here if I do control, I'm getting a quarter inch and then if I do here control, I'm getting also a quarter inch. All right, so we've got everything kind of shown there on the near side. Those are basically the slots for my hillside washers. And then I've got my weld up here on the top. Again, this, uh, this looks like it's showing a near side weld only, so I've got a quarter inch up on the top here. Let's see what I actually have. And this is a really important thing. So I'm glad this is one of the last things I'm showing here because I really want you to see this. This is where I had that CP weld, and I did not do the prep in here. Okay, and so this is kind of something that I've told AGT that they need to take a look at because technically there should not be a fillet weld lined up in here and this is a groove weld and it should ignore any of these welds that are not fillet um, and it should look at the type of weld coming across from Tecla and ignore these. And if there was a far side weld, like kind of a backing weld, that probably should be done by the machine if it can um, or maybe that needs to be done by hand after the CP weld is complete. But essentially, these type of welds do need to be ignored and you have to watch out for this. So there's a couple ways to work around this. Um, the first thing is you can actually turn the prep on and then the gap will actually prevent uh, Cortex from recognizing that there's a welding contact surface there. The other way to work around this is by going to properties, user defined attributes, and then you can put the C either in the user field one or you can put the C here in the user field five and then AGT will uh, and Cortex will ignore that upon import. I didn't set that here because I wanted you to see what would happen with uh, you know, groove welds and how it might accidentally come in here and actually make a fillet weld, which you, you don't want it to do that. So that was something for uh, that I wanted to showcase so that way you make sure you watch out for that. Now, you know, again, CP welds and groove welds aren't super common on metal buildings, but 
you know, sometimes you have, especially with flanges um, at end plates near the knee on a building um, where you just might have, you know, extra loads and stress there. And I have seen it where you do have to switch that to a CP and a groove weld. And so I want you to be aware that you do have to have a process in place to kind of uh, make sure that detailing and uh, exports over to, you know, Cortex don't accidentally put a fillet weld there. All right, so the last thing we're gonna look at here is the stitch weld. So we're on the far side web, and I just want you to visually uh, keep in mind what you're seeing here with the stitch weld in Tecla. We can see that there's a stitch uh, starting right there at the web splice, but if I go over here to um, essentially uh, in Cortex, you'll see that the welds both have a starting point here at the web splice, and again, it looks like it's just not reading exactly the geometry of each individual location. It's sort of reading the spacing and kind of the start and the end point of the polygon weld. And then it's uh, calculating kind of the spacing that it needs to do there. But then what it's also doing is it looks like, um, you know, Cortex will always put a start uh, weld at the beginning of the polygon weld. And so, and it'll also put it at the end here. And so that's why I have kind of like, it looks like these doubled up welds. Now, if you do ever have to delete out an extra weld that Cortex is creating it, and it's like doubling up here and it shouldn't be, then you can hold down control to select on the weld. You know, so hold down control and then click on it. And then if you actually um, press and hold down the delete key on your keyboard and then select on the weld again, it will actually delete that weld object out. Then you come up here uh, to the upper left-hand corner, and if you want to save this for actually processing this on the machine and running that through the simulator, then you uh, press the Save Modifications button, and it will actually store that change that you made. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that, and then so there we go. Now, the other thing um, that, that I just want you to see is that, um, so mainly just that, that stitch welds can be done. Um, there is no way to currently turn that, uh, you know, welds that are kind of fully continuous welds now in Cortex that came from the model. You can't just switch them on the fly to stitch welds. So again, that's why I went back into Tecla Structures and I put those far side welds and these stitch welds in um, if they're required. Um, even if they're just means and methods type welds for the shop, um, they do have to come across from Tecla Structures. That's the easiest way to get them to properly come across. There is some automated stitch uh, creation uh, based on um, some settings in Cortex. But again, if you're using CAD and you're reading the rest of your uh, welds from the model, it's best to just kind of keep everything correct from the source and do everything right in Tecla Structures and then have that information come across. Now again, just be aware, I wanted you to see that specifically on these stitch welds that it doesn't 100% exactly match the location geometry of how that weld was 100% positioned in Tecla, but it does add that start and that end weld, and then it just uses the spacing information that you read from Tecla to actually um, evenly space as much as it can, uh, essentially that stitch weld. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the slide rule INI configuration file and a couple settings in MBS that will impact how uh, welds import into Tecla structures to more optimally feed into the AGT Cortex software. Now underneath the weld options group, there's a few options here, like switching welds to polygon welds by default, um, splitting uh, half-sided welds, like specifically the welds at clips, um, and basically turning those into separate polygon welds. I usually set that to yes, um, just so that way it cleanly shows the two separate welds. Um, and then there's this split double-sided welds equals no. And so I usually have this uh, set to no nowadays, um, and partially because if I wanna show model welds on shop drawings, I don't want it to just overkill and create lots of extra welds at end plates and things like that. So I typically don't split my uh, double-sided welds and I have a near side, far side weld um, symbol all in one weld object, even though I'm creating polygon welds. All right, so there's that and then and you'll see the results of that here in a second. But then at the very bottom here, underneath the debug section, at the bottom there's this welds equals off or welds equals on. And I've actually turned welds equals off here for a second, so that way you can see what will happen here and why you should not use this feature uh, with the AGT machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and save uh, slide rule I and I, and then I will just go to MBS and I will import this project. All right, so I'm here in MBS, and before I actually do the import without any welds, I wanna quickly talk about the uh, weld database in MBS 
and some of the settings that you can control here um, on the design tab and going over here to DS underscore weld. So if we right click and we say edit on this, we can actually see that we can modify um, what weld sizes and weld types go at uh, different joints here um, in our uh, model or in our building. And a couple things that I've customized or modified here is the first one is at uh, clips. So basically where the clips are going to the, uh, you know, the top of the outside flange, like, or um, on the outside flange of columns. So girt and purling clips, essentially. What you can do is you can uh, use F for fillet weld, but then you put a space bar after that and then a colon and you do this at AS. And basically this is a special code that will tell slide rule to essentially do that staggered weld um, at half of the width of the clip. So this is something pretty important if you wanna make sure that that comes across automatically. Now the other thing that I've done here is um, on webs to flanges, which is a, a lot of what we were talking about before. Um, one thing I've done is I want to put that C in that user field five. So that way um, AGT and Cortex knows to ignore those welds upon import because those will already be done on the pull through welder. So the code for that is I can do the uh, fillet weld space and then colon at C um, essentially here. And that will tell slide rule um, uh, to add that user field five with that C in there. Now, one other thing that I've done that I want to showcase is that there is end plates to flange. And this is a case where I put in the groove welds here. So type G for groove weld. And I'll show you what actually happens when you import in. But I also set the at C here so that way these uh, properly get ignored as well. All right, so I'm gonna close this down. And if you do modify the DS weld in any way, um, and you've updated or changed any of those values, you will need to come up here and you'll need to remake your design and detail in the job. So that way it updates that and uh, updates the design using that new welding information. All right, so I should be all good there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run slide rule and in slide rule INI, I have all the welds turned off and I wanna show you what happens. All right, so when I zoom into a rafter here, I'll select on it and I'll right click and say inquire on assembly. Now you're gonna see that everything is still joined properly as an assembly because all the yellow parts are the pieces that are shop attached to the main part there, which is orange. Now the pro, and you can actually see the bill material here. Now the problem with this though, is that there are no weld objects. And so when you actually go over here to the AGT exporter, it does not pick up that um, even though it is technically attached to the assembly, the AGT exporter does not recognize any submaterial parts that do not have a weld, a shop weld that is welding that part to the assembly. And this is something I've noticed during testing. So, you know, some people might be inclined to say, well, hey, I'll just turn all the, the welds off from MBS and I'll just use the catch all weld mode over an AGT. But the thing is, is that if there is no physical weld object between the parts and Tecla, then um, basically AGT and the export isn't gonna see it. So my recommendation is don't use this feature if you're using the AGT export. All right, so I've deleted the model and I am going to go ahead and go back here into the slide rule INI file. And instead of welds equals off, I'm gonna say welds equals on. I will then save the file and then I can close that down. I'll then go back into MBS and you do not need to rerun the job or remake the job um, if you're just changing slide rule INI settings. Uh, basically those get read on the fly during the actual run of slide rule. So I'm just gonna run slide rule again. All right, so now in this case, you can actually see all of the blue uh, weld symbols that have been added across the model. And if I actually go select this continuous weld here, I will double click on it so that way we can get to its properties. I'll go to user defined attributes here and we can see that in user field five, there is the C that has come across. So that shows that that weld should be ignored by Cortex. Now up here on the staggered weld, essentially you'll see two separate polygon welds. And again, notice that because in slide rule up in the weld options, I told it to put in polygon welds, it's actually putting in a polygon weld with a start and an end point here. And it basically allows me to control the distance or length of that weld. Now, if I go ahead and go to uh, properties here, go to user defined attributes, this is going to have a A on it. And again, that's coming from that weld code from DS Weld. And Cortex will actually see any welds that are designated as A as automatic and that uh, Cortex will apply that weld exactly as it sees here from the model. So C is for ignore and then A is going to tell Cortex to actually do that weld. Now, 
that showcases that particular case. So we've looked at the ignore. Now the last thing I wanted to showcase here is what happens and what does MBS do when it brings in your groove welds from your DS weld. So I have a flange to an endplate here, and that's what I had set up in DS weld. And when I click on this weld object, um, you'll see here that it actually puts in the wrong uh, weld type in Tecla. I've actually notified MBS about this. They're working on kind of switching that and fixing that out. Um, but then essentially it puts in um, the wrong weld type. And again, um, you, know, you have to watch out because there's no prep actually being done here um, that AGT and Cortex will recognize this kind of this weld and it'll turn it into a fillet weld automatically. So you have to watch out for this and make sure that you change this weld to be the right weld that you need. Um, but the other key thing here is that um, actually uh, Cor uh, Cortex will ignore this weld because we set it up in DS Weld. Um, if I go to Properties and then I go to User Defined Attributes here at the bottom, I set that up in DS Weld for those Groove Welds to actually ignore that using the C in the code. So even if this is uh, incorrectly imported into you know Tecla and you're just kind of quickly using this as a reference for the shop drawings because I have some automated tables that look for this weld type and says that there's a CP weld on the shop drawing, um, this is the C in there is actually telling Cortex to ignore this. So there you go. Those are a couple of extra hints and tips uh, to recognize and watch out for and actually setting up MBS so that way you can get a more optimal import. Now again, the one thing I just wanted to explain is that MBS does not have the ability uh, to just automatically do a far side stitch weld. There's nothing, no really options in the DS weld file for that. And there is not an automated option to actually pull those welds back. Um, you know, that you would actually do in the shop and maybe kind of do six inches here with the robotic welder. Any of that kind of work, you actually have to manually change Tecla to do that. And some, you know, programming tools and things can be written to, to actually automate that process so detailers don't have to manually do that. But today, it does have to actually be done in Tecla structures if you want that to come across right over into Cortex. Now there was a lot of things covered in this video and I really wanted to showcase this as a quick comprehensive guide of some of the common things that you'll go through and experience and that you need to watch out for. But this is definitely stuff that um, you'll, you'll more methodically go through with some testing. And I usually go through this very carefully with clients when I come out on site and I do training. And then also the AGT folks, they actually do uh, multiple trainings for you on the Cortex software over a period of time. So that way you can get very familiar with how things work. You can do tests and uh, show how things are, are brought in. Now, usually your machine is going to have a little bit of a lead time. You might have a few months before your machine actually comes out on site. And so my recommendation is that uh, if you're just getting started with Tecla structures and slide rule, you want to get started as early as possible, get used to the learning curve of working with Tecla structures, get your drawings set up, understand how that whole workflow and system works with welds and do a lot of tests well before your machine comes out on site. So that way you're prepared for the AGT and the Cortex training. And then you're also ready to get up and running once the machine is set up on your site. For additional training and setup and configuration of MBS slide rule with Tecla structures, please reach out to me at my contact information shown and I'd be glad to help.